case 10. All right, so this is me. Um, so again, right off the bat, we see um, some epidermal hyperplasia kind of in this localized area because that's the periphery. So it's yeah. Um, I like that you point that out. That's that's really helpful, right? When you're debating, I mean, here, obviously, the epidermis is thick, but sometimes when you're not sure, go look at the edge of the biopsy, and that's always helpful for a variety of different things. When you see something happening and you're wondering, is that normal for this site? Well, see if the other skin at the edge looks the same way or looks different. Very good. Um, and then underneath that epidermal hyperplasia, we can start to see those, um, you know, dense proliferation of spindle cells, probably fibroblasts. Um, so that makes you think maybe we have the top of a dermatofibroma here. Yeah, very good. This is the top of a dermatofibroma and it's spindle cells in a kind of haphazard pattern or short fascicles. They often, particularly when you see the top of them, I find that finding the little cells that are kind of almost boomerang shaped or, or triangle shaped wrapping around collagen can be really helpful. Like this is really nice here. Like when I see this pattern right here, I have no doubt that what I'm dealing with is the top of dermatofibroma. I'm not worried about it being anything else. Even though I'm not seeing most of the lesion below it, it's hard for me to imagine what else it could be. And then look, what we've got here is a little uh, little basaloid bud with a little um, uh, hair papilla under it. This is a tiny little baby hair follicle growing here. And so as you guys know, sometimes dermatofibromas, they induce or have what we call epidermal induction. They, they induce the overlying epidermis to grow and make a variety of changes. Sometimes that change takes the form of elongated reedy that tend to get blunted at the bottom. Sometimes they're more like almost lentigo looking like this case. They may become hyperpigmented. It's very common to get increased melanin pigment in the basal layer in the um, in the hypertrophic epidermis over the top of a dermatofibroma. And for that reason, a lot of dermatofibromas have kind of a brownish color to them clinically. They're firm papules, often brown. And I've often seen them sent in as rule out uh, nevus. You know, people think that it might be a nevus. Although they're usually firm. And of course, when you pinch them clinically, they, they tend to dimple down into the skin. And then sometimes you can get adnexal overgrowth, like particularly basaloid epithelium that represents the uh, you know primitive little hair buds, um, little hair bulbs starting to grow down. And occasionally that can kind of mimic basal cell carcinoma. Here it's obvious because you've got the little hair papilla. And if you look really close, you can even see those little red, that little red area. Those are trichohyaline granules. It's starting to try to make a little inner root sheath there. Isn't that nice? So that's, that's basaloid follicular induction. And, and epidermal hyperplasia over the top of a dermatofibroma. Let me show you over here though. A lot of times I'll get it uh, and it won't have such obvious spindle cells. It'll just look like this. And if you just have this and they send it in as a pigmented lesion, well, it'd be easy to say, I think it's like a flat seborrheic keratosis. Look, it's acanthosis, orthokeratin on top, horn pseudocysts even, no problem, right? So very easy to think of, but the clue that this is probably not a, a, a macular separate keratosis or a lentigo is that the reedy are flat at the bottom. So if I think I'm seeing a seb, but I see kind of blunted, tabled, flattened reedy, I always go look down in the dermis and see if I can see some subtle spindle cells wrapping around collagen, then it's probably a dermatofibroma. Occasionally, if I don't see any spindle cells, but the top looks like this, I'll say seborrheic keratosis and then put a comment that, you know, an alternative possibility is that this could be epidermal hyperplasia uh, over the top of an underlying unsampled dermatofibroma. The main, both of them are benign, but the main reason is that if the lesion persists clinically, then probably what it was was it was just a DF, but I've occasionally had that where I can't uh, find it. But usually if you look closely or maybe do some deeper cuts, you'll find some little areas where the spindle cells are wrapping around the collagen, um, even if it's just subtle, and that'll be the clue to uh, dermatofibroma. Very good.